Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we will deep dive into code splitting. We will understand what is bundling and how it works. We will also understand how code splitting improves the performance of our application using dynamic import and route based lazy loading. So if this sounds interesting, then stick around. Also, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. All right, guys, so today's video is sponsored by Zigo Cloud. Zigo Cloud is a global cloud communication service provider to build powerful communication apps with voice and video chat using their SDK and APIs. Zigo Cloud is trusted by more than 4000 businesses and offers pre-built UI kits and SDKs to developer and businesses. With their pre-built UI kits and SDK, Zigo Cloud now has solution for every industry. Recently, they have introduced the live streaming SDK and APIs to build interactive live streaming apps faster. Zico Cloud provides an easy guide for developers to integrate the SDK and build the apps faster. You can start building your apps by simply signing up to Zico Cloud and get 10,000 minutes free for every month. After login, you can create a new project, select the use case for your app, then you need to give your project name and then you can choose the SDK. Once you have the project, you can use the configuration in your project to integrate the live streaming. Now, let me give you a walkthrough on the documentation. So Zigo Live helps you to quickly build reliable and scalable video calling and interactive live video streaming apps for your mobile, desktop and web application. With simple four steps, you can use the Zigo Cloud platform to have a high quality live streaming experience. And you can use it for various use cases like social media and entertainment, live shopping, live gaming streams. Now, if you want to integrate the Zigo Live SDK in your project, then you can do it in two ways. The first way is you can download the SDK from the official website and integrate it manually. And the second way is you can use the NPM to integrate the SDK. Now, if you want to implement the basic live streaming in your project, then you can follow this guide, which has all the implementation step, how to create the Zigo Express Engine instance, login into the room, the logout room and API calling sequences. Now you also have the documentation. If you want to have the sample code, then you can use this link with the GitHub link where you will find the sample code. And this also has the steps how you run your sample codes. So you will get the app ID server ID from the project which you have created in the admin console. You will also find the guides for the real time messaging, stream mixing, how you enhance your live quality, screen sharing and many more. So you will find all the links related to the Zigo Cloud live streaming SDK in the description of the video. And I highly recommend to give a try and integrate it in your project. All right, guys. So before we jump into the code example, let's just understand the basics of bundling and code splitting. So now what is bundling and bundling is a process of following imported files and then merging them into a single file. And we called it as bundle. And most React apps have their files bundled using tools like Webpack, Rollup or Browserify. Let's take a simple example. So we have an app JS where we have an import statement and we import a named export, which is an add from the math.js. Then we just do a console log and use the function add. Now below you will see that we have math.js, which is actually have the name export. And when this file is bundled, it looks something like this. We have the function add and then we have the console. So this is the bundled file, which has merged both the files app.js and the math.js. Now let's understand why code splitting. So bundling is great but as our application grows our bundle size will also grow too and especially if we are including large third-party libraries in our project we need to make sure that we don't accidentally make our bundle so large that our app takes a long time to load and code splitting our application can help the lazy load just the things that are currently needed by the user so we will load only those components that are required by the user and that will dramatically improve the performance of our app now let's understand this with the example so let's go to the Visual Studio code and in the Visual Studio code, I already have some of the code. So let me give you a quick walkthrough of it. So in the source folder, I have the pages where I have the contact JS, home JS, product JS and service JS. And inside each of the page, I don't have much code. I have just that I am in the contact component. Then we also have a components folder, which has the header.js and it just has a simple navigation for our pages. Now, if we go to our app JS, then inside the app JS, you will see that we have a simple H2 and it says that I am in the app component. Then we have the app routes, which has all our routes. So we are using the react router dome version six and we have all the routes here. Then we have a movies.js file, which contains a array of the objects 
of movies data. Now we are going to start with the very basic. So let's go to our app.js and we are going to run the application on the local environment. So let me open the terminal. So I'm going to click on new terminal and then I'm going to have the npm start. So this is going to start my application on the local environment. All right. So now we can see that our application started on localhost 3000. Now the first thing what we are going to do is uh, I need to display my movies data in my app component. So I will first import the movies data. So it is a name export. So I will have the movies data and that will be coming from the movies. And now what I will do is I'm going to go here and I will add the pre tag and inside the pre tag, I'm going to have the JSON dot stringify. And then inside that, what I will do is I'm going to have my movies data. Then I'm going to have the null and then I will have two as the spacing and then I will save it and then we'll have to just add the braces so that it will render the value. So I'm going to add the braces here and I will save it. Now you will see that as soon as I save it, my data gets loaded. Now the thing here which I want to show you is that first I will just refresh this page and we see that on the load, we have to load the movies data. Now I will go to the inspect element and then what I will do is uh, let me go to the inspect element and here you will see that if I go to the network tab, and now I will refresh the page again. So if I refresh the page again, you will see that we have a bundle.js file. And if I go to this bundle.js file and then here, if I search for the movies data, then you will see that the movies data is already loaded when the page gets loaded. But what we want is that let's understand a case that we don't want to load this data directly when the page is loaded and we have a button. So when we click on a button, we need to fetch the movies data. So what I will do is I'm going to create a simple button here and I will have the button. Then I'm going to have the get movies. All right. And then I'm going to add a function here. So let me have the on click and on the click, I will have the get movies. All right. I will save it. And now you will see that as soon as I save it, I get an error. So let's define the get movies function. So I will go here and then I will have the constant get movies. All right. This will be an arrow function. And then here, what I will do is first, I'm going to create a simple state. So let's have a constant state of movies. Then I'm going to have the set movies. Oops, I misspelled the movies. All right. And this will be equals to the use state. So let's create a local state variable and I will have the empty array. And then in the get movies, what we will do is we need to set the movies. So let me set the movies and I'm going to set the movies as movies data. All right. I will save it. And now what I will do is here, I need to have the movies. If the length is greater than zero, then in that case, I want to have the JSON dot stringify. Otherwise I will just have the empty. So let me have the empty. I will save it. And now we see that we don't see the get movies. So if I go to the inspect element and if I go to the network tab again, then here, if I refresh my page, you will see that we have the bundle.js and in the bundle.js, we still have the movies data. So if I search for the movies data, then you will see that we still have the movies data. Although the movies data is not required on load of the page. So what we can do here is that we can actually uh, do the lazy load of this movies data and we will only load the movies data whenever a user is clicking on the get movies. So for that, what we will do is let's do the dynamic importing. I'm going to comment this out first. And here, what I will do is I'm going to have the import. I want to import the movies and this is going to return a promise. So we will have the dot then and inside the dot then we are going to receive a module and then we are going to have an arrow function and then we can make use of this module. So first let's have the console dot log of the module. And then I will also have the set movies and set movies will have the module dot movies data. Since we are having the movies data as a named export. All right. And then I'm just going to remove this movies data. All right. I will save it. And then if we go down, then here, instead of the movies data, we are now going to have the movies as we are using the state variable. So now we are using a dynamic import, which has a promise that resolves with a module. And then we can use the module and we have the named export on the module. So if I go to the console log and if I refresh my page, now in this case, you what you will see that if I go to the network tab and if we go to the bundles file, then here we will not have any reference to the movies data. So if I go and search for the movies data, then you will see that we don't get any movies data and we can also verify in the source. So if I go to the source and here you will see that in the source, we don't have the movies since we are loading the movies dynamically. So if I click on this get, then you will see that we have the movies.js. So now we are loading the movies dynamically and only when it is required. So if we go to 
to the network tab then you will see that we have the source movies.js chunk this is called the code splitting so we are creating a separate chunk for the movies data and we load the movies data only when it is actually required so we can also modify this and we can what we can do is we can do a destructure here and we can have the movies data directly so i'm going to have the movies data and then we can simply have the movies data here but before that we will, let's go to the console and let's check what we get on the modules so if we expand the module then you will see that this is the name export now we can also use in this manner so i'm going to comment this out and if i refresh my page and if i click on it we will still see the same thing now other thing we can do is if we have the default export so what i will do is i'm going to have the constant as movies data and then i'm going to have the export default all right and then i will have the movies data all right i will save it and now if we go in the app js and in this case we are not going to destructure anything and we are going to receive the module and i can just change this to module dot default and this should also work fine so if i click on it then you will see that we get still the data now the other thing which i want to show you is that if we go to the network tab and in the network tab you will see that we have the chunk for the movies so this is the src underscore movies underscore js chunk but if we want to rename this so we don't want to have a default name for the movie chunks if we want to rename it with a proper name so that we can use it later for caching purpose. So what we can do is this is our import statement and here we can add the asterisk and inside that what we can do is we can have the webpack chunk name and then we can give the name. So I want to give the name as movies. I will save it and now what we will do is if I refresh my page then you will see that we click on the movies and we see okay so we still see the old name so what we have done is we have made a mistake here so i'm going to have the chunk spelling correct all right so we have corrected the spelling of the chunk and now if i refresh my page and if we click on the get movies then you will see that we have the movies.chunk.js so we can actually rename the webpack chunks now the next thing i want to show you is that we can also make use of an async await so what i will do is i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to comment this and let's have an another function all right and here what we will do is i'm going to have the async here and then what we will do is i'm going to have a constant i will have the movies and this will be equals to the await all right i will just minimize this and then what we will do is we are going to just remove this all right we don't want it and then we will have the movies dot default all right since we are having the default export and then what we will do is we are going to use the movies here so let me have the movies here all right we are getting an error so let me remove this and i will save it so now if we refresh our page then we see that we still get the same thing we have the same result and we have the movies chunk so we can also use the async await or we can use the promises now the next thing i want to show you is that how we can use the react dot lazy for the dynamic import of a regular function so for that what i will do is i'm going to comment this out and then we are going to use the routing that we have created so what i will do is let's comment this to out we don't want it now and then we are going to implement the routing here so for that what i will do is i'm going to use the router which i have already imported then i'm going to use the header component so that i can see my navigation and then what i will do is i'm going to use the app routes so let me have the app routes which is having all my routes and i'm going to save it now you will see that as soon as i save it we see the routing on the screen so we have the home then we have the products we have the services and we have the contacts and what we will do first thing is that if i go to my source and if i reload this page so let me reload the page and then here you will see that if we go to the source we have all our routes loaded and we have also our pages loaded but since the component is still not on the screen user is not on the components or user is not on the services why we load those pages and if our application grows bigger and bigger then we are loading unnecessary components at the load so what we can do is here we can apply the code splitting and then we can use the dynamic imports so that is going to load only those components that are required or visible by the user so what we can do is if I go to my uh, app route and here we can make changes so we can use the react.lazy in order to load our components so what we will do is we are going to have a constant here and that constant will be equals to the products which will be equals to the react.lazy and this is going to have a function inside it so this function will have the import and we are going to import the pages all right and then i'm going to close this here and then we are going to close the now what we can do is we can also add the webpack chunk name so what i will do is i'm going to simply copy this from here all right and then i'm going to add it here all right and then we can give the name as product so this is going to have our product.chunk.js all right so we need to import the react so what i will do is we are going to have the import 
import react and we are also going to import the lazy from react all right and now we can just simply remove this and i will save it all right now we are going to apply the same for the others as well so what i will do is i'm going to have the all right then i'm going to have the closing tags and now we can also use the same name so i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to add it here and we are going to name it as the services all right then let's change it for the contact so i'm going to have the constant contact junk name so i'm going to copy this all right and then i'm going to add it here and this will be contact and the last thing is the for the home component so let's do it for the home component as well And I'm going to add it here. And I'm not going to give any chunk name for the home page. All right. Now, if I refresh it, then you will see that we get an error. And here is because that whenever you use the react.lazy, you need to use a suspense. We are doing a lazy load. And whenever we navigate from one page to another, it takes some fraction of seconds to load that. And that's why we get an error. So we can solve this with the help of a suspense, which is going to hold the rendering with the fallback JSEC until we load the component completely. So I'm going to have the suspense here. And and then we can simply wrap this into a suspense so let me wrap this into a suspense we can give a fallback and we can give any jsx so here what i will do is uh let me cut this and let me add it below the routes all right i will save it and in the fallback i'm going to give a jsx of an h2 and inside the h2 i'm going to have the dot 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 loading and i will save it and now you will see that when i click on the services we go to the services when i click on contact we go to the contact when i click on home we go to the home and in between there is a fraction of second you will see that there is a loading screen so if we want to see that what we can do is let's go to the network tab i'm going to clear everything and then in the throttling what i will do is i'm going to do a slow 3g now i will refresh my page and you will see that it's now loading slowly all right so now the page is loaded and you saw that there was a dot 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 loading since we are using the 3g as a network so that's why it takes a lot of time to load now if we go to this bundle.js then in the bundle.js you will see that we don't have any reference to the services and if we search for i am in services then you will see that we don't have anything now if we go to back here and what i will do is i'm going to clear it and if i want to go to the products so you will notice that when i click on the products we will have the fallback jsx which is dot loading and it's taking some time to load our products chunk so you will see that we have the product chunk separately let's go to the services and then we have the services chunk if we go to the source folder then we can see here as well so if i go here and you will see that right now we don't have the contact.js because we haven't clicked on the contact.js and we haven't loaded that component so if i click on it then you will see that it's loading and we see that we have the contact here so let me go here uh, no throttling and here you will see that we have a different different chunks where we use the code splitting and we use the dynamic imports using the react lazy and then suspense and this is going to improve our performance performance because on the initial load our bundle size will not be too large to load it so that is going to render quickly and our performance of the application will be improved so that's all i have in this video i hope you like the video a thumbs up is appreciated you can also connect with me via facebook or instagram you can follow me on twitter for latest update and before you go don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one thank you thanks for watching